afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another new edition of today's Youth. And our main topic today will be Youth on Screen. And we are going to be discussing the uh, importance of uh, meeting youth expectations on the screen. What does the youth want from their public service broadcasters? And how can public state televisions and even private channels meet the needs of the youth right after this short break? on screen aims at promoting TV programming that better responds to the needs of young people, facilitates their engagement and improves the portrayal of young women and men in content. Sessions will examine trends related to the needs and preferences of young people as an audience, the way in which they are represented and the extent of which their voices find a space in mainstream media, particularly television. Youth on Screen is expected to help shape the development of TV programs that more closely reflect the realities of youth and better respond to their expectations. It will promote the engagement of youth with media, including contributors to content production. The initiative will also facilitate training and mentoring of TV program development, in-country meetings between program teams and senior managers of media outlets, and a number of sub-regional gatherings of stakeholders concerned. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Glad to be joined today by Inji Mayer, political researcher, and Shayma Egamel, training development executive. Thank you for joining us, and good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <coughs> right, I'll start with you, Inji, and I would like you to tell me about yourself, your education, and your work. Uh, I'm a political science graduate, um, and I'm also interested in media. Um, actually, my senior thesis was about the role of the media in exceptional political times. And the case of study was the referendum on the Constitution in 2012. Right. And it was sort of an anal analytical study. Um, right. It was about an analyzing uh, TV shows. Um, I work uh, right now, I'm, I'm working in the political research field and the Egyptian Center for Security Research and Studies. And uh, right before that, I was um, uh, Observer's Coordinator's Assistant at the um, um, European Union Elections Observation Mission mm -hmm. in the previous um, uh, presidential elections. Right, Che Me. Um, I used to be Assistant Lecturer at uh, MSA University. Mm -hmm. I worked for three major faculties. These are Faculty of Management Sciences, Mass Communication, and Light Technology. But currently, I'm a trainer and development executive at Egyptian Center for Securities Study. Right. Uh, Inji, which line of television programs did you think that youth, especially in, in Egypt, make sure to follow? Um, actually, I think personally, and my modest opinion is that youth right now are, might not be very interested in television programs. Um, they use uh, social media a lot more as, as a reference, right. um, whether in um, expressing themselves or, um, or even in receiving news. So, right, right. Shaymet, why do you think, uh, as Inji just said, that uh, uh, the youth nowadays, they don't really uh, uh, watch or follow uh, TV programs? Why did they shift to uh, the social media? And how can we bridge this gap? The main convenient factor that shift the youth to social media is time lag because youth are available are able to have exactly the same news at their convenient time mm -hmm. not the media time okay mm -hmm. and majority of youth expect that media is not objective anymore and there are a lot of channels that are targeted with specific agenda mm -hmm. thus they seek to have variety of news on different sites on social media Right, uh, Inji, uh, how do you think we can uh, meet the youth needs, in your opinion? Um, I think the most important thing uh, for the young people right now, especially in, in uh, knowing the news, is, um, is the speed. They need to know what happened 
in the same exact second. This is why maybe uh, we need in television for the news to be a lot, I don't know, maybe quicker. Right, okay. you've attended the Youth on Screen uh, med med Media uh, conference that was held this week. Yes. Uh, what were the main outcomes of this conference and uh, how do you think they can help uh, public service broadcasters to meet the youth needs in Egypt, for example? I mean, they're, they're talking also about the whole Arab region, but if we're talking about Egypt in specific, what were the main outcomes of that conference? Well, it was a very interesting conference, actually. Um, it was about um, uh, what do the young people want mm -hmm. uh, from television. Um, it, was, uh, it was consisted of um, uh, media experts. They were speakers, uh, international media experts. Uh, some of them were uh, very famous uh, TV shows producers, uh, such as uh, Generation Quoi. Uh, and uh, they wanted to uh, to make an Egyptian virgin from uh, from Generation Quoi, which is a very interesting program actually. So maybe it was the, the main the main idea of the conference. Mm -hmm. Right. If we talk more about national television, what do you think should differ uh, on shows uh, there from those aired on privately owned uh, TV stations, for example, Shaima? We cannot ignore the effect of budget because mm -hmm. privately owned broadcasters are fully funded. Mm -hmm. They have uh, facilities, they have equipment, they have training for its staff. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why their competition is much intensive. Okay. Mm -hmm. But um, I think Egyptian uh, national television need to be fully funded. Mm -hmm. But I mean the content of the shows, when we talk about the content of the programs. As I told earlier, youth are not seeking television programs. Mm -hmm. They are able to find what they need on social media. Mm -hmm. So in order to grab youth at home to watch television, it's a difficult task. But this can happen through using uh, different content that they appeal. Mm -hmm. like sports, fashion, this can grab, I think, this can grab them to television mm -hmm. once more. And uh, as a training executive, uh, how do you think media can uh, have its effect on training or training can have its effect on media? Media can affect training because media is able to provide a lot of stories that training can use as a syllabus or as content. Okay, but mm -hmm. this will be for media graduates or media claimers only. But Training can affect media because it can enhance the ex experience of staff mm -hmm. and or and of a broadcaster. Right, and uh, Inji, if we would like to have a recipe to be interesting for the youth on the public television, what would that be in your opinion? Well, I think maybe the first thing uh, is um, the content itself, just like you said. Mm -hmm. um, maybe the problem is that most of the TV shows talk about the same things. All of them, or most of them. Mm -hmm. uh, they talk about mainly political issues. Young people are okay, interested in, in political issues, but at the same time, maybe if they find success stories for young people just like them, maybe they would be a lot more interested uh, because it's going to give them a role model and a positive energy, a hope for the future. Mm -hmm. um, maybe another thing that would attract young people to watch um, television is um, the type of guests that the television programs uh, host. Um, maybe I think we should focus more on um, um, positive uh, models, in, but in particular that are young people more than uh, old people because it's nothing special to them to see uh, an old expert talking about something, but mm. to see a young person talking about something that has good ideas, it's going to be interesting. Right, uh, what about your opinion, Shayma? I totally disagree with this, because the youth are able to find this role model on social media, and they seek to have information at their convenient hour, mm -hmm. not media hours, okay? I used to work a lot with the youth as an assistant lecturer at university, and they do not seek media, they do not watch television. They are able to find what they need anywhere, anywhere else. You mean on the social media? Yes. 
right? Especially after uh, many channels, many private channels was able to broadcast online. Mm -hmm. So they are able to record what they want and mm -hmm. watch it any, at any other time. Right. Uh, Angie, uh, according to the conference that was held recently and that uh, you've attended, how do you think we can bridge the gap and how can we get back the youth to their uh, national television? Actually, this is exactly the, the, the main idea that the conference was about. Um, it was sort of a brainstorming uh, sessions um, mm -hmm. that the media experts wanted to know how can we get back those young people, the segments of young people that are no longer interested in watching television programs. Mm -hmm. And um, some of the ideas were what I just said right now about changing the nature of uh, the, the content of these television programs and mm -hmm. uh, the guests and developing the ways that the hosts themselves use mm -hmm. uh, to deliver the message to young people. and. Um, and, well, the most important thing is delivering uh, positive models to them. So, um, this was basically what mm -hmm. they were talking about. Right, and uh, the conference also uh, uh, gathered a large number of countries, uh, including Jordan, Iraq, different Arab, Lebanon also, different mm -hmm. Arab countries. Uh, what was their uh, experience in this? Well, most of them were media experts, like I said. Um, some of them media experts from different countries, from Lebanon, yes. Iraq, and Syria. Yes. So, so the main thing was um, that they all have different backgrounds, mainly cultural backgrounds. So that was very useful in the brainstorming sessions because mm -hmm. everyone speaks for the cultural background that he has according to his nationality and the nature of the society um, from which he comes. So. So, taking the cultural differences into consideration when trying to make something new, trying to develop media tools around the world, is very important because, because the audience is not from the same cultural background and mm -hmm. does not receive the same message in the same way. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, um, Egyptian audience can receive a specific message in a way based on their cultural background. Right while the French uh, audience, for instance, might receive the same idea, but different. in a very different way. Right. Because they have different values, both of them. Right. Uh, Shaima, what do you think is the role of public service broadcasters in this? To reach, to, to make youth come again to television. Yeah. I think uh, public broadcasters need to go to youth, not wait to youth to come to them. Because youth, I don't think they will come to television anymore. They don't need television. We have to go to youth and we have to publish what we want, publish uh, talk shows and important programs online in order to motivate youth to follow what's happening in the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, how can this be achieved on the ground practically? Online television. We need to shift to online, to virtual environment of television. Mm -hmm. Because they are there. We have to go there for them, mm -hmm. not wait for them to come to us. Because mm -hmm. they will not come. Simply, as I told you, they do not need us. Mm -hmm. They expect that we have to take many roles to go to them. So mm -hmm. it's important for public broadcasters to establish online television and go talk to youth within own language. Do not use what we used to have at 80s or 90s. They do not understand such language. They have their own terminology, their own lifestyle, and media need to cope with them mm -hmm. because they are the audience. Right. Inji, uh, in your opinion, what's the role of public service broadcasters uh, to, uh, how can they develop to reach the youth? Well, the idea of my colleague was um, exactly, um, I, I approve with it, because we have to take into consideration that young people now, young sectors of Egyptians, are most of the time they are not home and mm. they, they, they are not somewhere where they can watch television. So online versions or applications or any virtual, virtual shape of these TV programs will be very useful because it will be easier for them to watch television but in a different perspective, mm -hmm. in, in a way that is more practical for them. Mm -hmm. instead right. of uh, 
Right, Inji, mm -hmm. and we'll be talking about uh, more about public service broadcasters and the needs of the youth in Egypt, but right after this short break. قررت أن يكون العام 2016 عاما للشباب المصري أصدرت حزمة من القرارات والتوجيهات إطلاق البرنامج الرئاسي لتهيل الشباب للقيادة إطلاق مشروع بنك المعرفة المصري دعم وتنمية المشروعات الصغيرة والمتوسطة تحديث أعباء خدمة القروض عن كاهل الشباب المصري إطلاق من تنفيذ بناء 145 ألف وحدة سكنية بالإسكان الاجتماعي للشباب خلال عام 2016 تحديث المناهج التعليمية لجميع المراحل الدراسية توسع في النشاط الرياضي والارتفاع بمستوى اللياقة البدنية للشباب المصري إحياء دور قصور الثقافة وإقامة المسابقات الفنية إطلاق منتدى للحوار مع الشباب مؤتمر وطني للشباب يعقد بمدينة شرم الشيخ خلال شهر سبتمبر القادم لا تتخلوا عن تجربتكم تمسكوا بوطنكم تمسكوا بالأخلاق وصحيح الدين تسلحوا بالعلم وواكبوا العصر وبقوة شبابها ستحيا مصر تحيا مصر Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're still watching today's Youth Live on Nile TV International and still with my guests, Inji and Shaime. Thank you for being with us today once again. And back to you, Shaime, I want you to tell me uh, how do you see uh, the role of the youth themselves to get back to the media? What do you think, they, how can they get engaged in the media? Youth are totally independent than we used to have at their age. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about university students. Okay, that uh, they are exceeding 20 years old. Right. They are totally independent. They, ha they need to design their own route of mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. So I think media need to present, as my colleague said, different models that appeal to them. Right. In, in order to motivate them. Mm -hmm. Because majority of the students are either educating simply for taking family business or educating for simply being abroad and be an, an expatriate. Mm -hmm. We don't want to live at Egypt because they are afraid of economic circumstances. Right. So media has a role and this role must be in now because they are escaping from the country. We need to remain them and give them some incentive in order to maintain this, this generation. Right. Uh, what do you think is the role of the media as an educational tool? I used to have uh, institutional programs when I was at primary school yeah. there was I think weekly show for education mm -hmm. that we used to follow but now they are not this type of audience mm -hmm. they are uh, they need the tiny material they can they can just study to uh, to have to, to have an exam mm -hmm. and that's that mm -hmm. that's it mm -hmm. they don't have any information so media need to educate I found that youth are likely uh, likely to have sarcastic, sarcastic show, like Abla Fahita and these type of programs. Right. We can approach these youth by this type of um, programs. You think these kind of programs can attract the youth more? Yes, it's highly appealing to them. Right. Uh, Inji, uh, do you think that uh, the youth uh, can return back to the media uh, if they uh, have the appealing uh, type of programs, as Shaima have just said, and uh, these kind of uh, maybe sarcastic uh, type of um, programs, in your opinion, will they go back or will they remain on their uh, social media? Um, definitely, they will go back if they find something interesting on television, because we've already seen um, uh, examples of mm -hmm. these of this phenomenon, uh, right. like uh, satire uh, pr programs, because the most important thing is to deliver the message in the way that the people like. And the Egyptians have a sarcastic uh, nature. They have this sense of humor. They take everything in, in a very nice and light way. So when we deliver the message to them in this way, they will receive it and it's going to be very interesting for them. Mm -hmm. So, yes, they will get back. Right. If we take uh, the uh, public service uh, television or the state-owned television as opposed to the public, to the private media channels, uh, what do you think is more appealing and uh, how do you see them both? How do you assess both? Um, well, both of them have their, their own... Um, let's say, special, uh, special kind, because 
uh, public service television has this extra thing that they speak in in a much formal way. Maybe they have um, they're supposed to have how can we say it um, more. They, they, they are strict, sticking more to uh, traditions, to the traditions of the Egyptian society, for example. Well, yes, that's, that's one thing. It's, it's, it's not a positive thing. So mm -hmm. it, might, it might make young people not really interested in all the things that are uh, broadcasted on um, uh, public service television. Mm -hmm. uh, but if they change the way, just just the way, not not just the tools, just not the, the way content. That, you mean yes, not changing the content, but yes. changing the tools, deliver, the way. Yes, I, I can deliver the same message, uh, talking about the same thing mm -hmm. that I used to talk about uh, um, yesterday, mm -hmm. but I can develop it to deliver this message in in a different perception. Right. Shaima, uh, how do you see public service television or the state-owned television as opposed to private media channels in Egypt? From my point of view, public service television had been withdrawn from the market. Even households and early people are shifted to private televisions. And with why is that of, in your opinion? Because there is a wide variety of television, of channels, which every channel has its own content, has talk shows, has programs, that make even even elderly people, not just youth, are shifting to private television. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a must mm -hmm. for public service providers or public mm -hmm. service broadcasters to to Don't see you the way that some private media channels are using uh, um, the way that they make the program just very hard to to attract the co more commercials in some of those televisions. Don't you see so? Yes, I see so. But mm -hmm. this is in a very limited kind of television. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of broadcasters that sh the that work on private television, they have targeted uh, agenda, they have uh, well scripted material, very good content that make youth and households are appealing to watch these televisions. Mm -hmm. But don't you see that the state-owned television is more unbi unbiased and uh, more um, uh, reasonable and more uh, straightforward to the point uh, in uh, delivering the message? From my point of view, I think but from youth point of view, they are totally disagree. They have this philosophy that Egyptian television is totally biased. They are in objective. They are. Um, mm -hmm. They tend to focus more on what what actually happening and what actually we want media to have right. to know. But youth, I want to have different variety mm -hmm. so they can judge what's happening. Right, uh, we just have one minute to go. So, Inji, uh, your final uh, point of view on this. Um, I think that private television um, use the foreign television programs, uh, models, as, as a tool to develop the way they deliver the message to the Egyptian audience. This mm -hmm. is why it might be a lot appealing a lot more appealing than uh, uh, public service television. So they, because they're always creative, they always put something new in their program. Mm -hmm. So I think this is the main reason that they, they always change all the time, so it's more appealing for Right. Uh, of course, talking about uh, public service broadcasting and the state-owned television and private channels is a long issue and it will be discussed more in uh, other episodes uh, here on uh, today's youth. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Inji Toher and Shaima Egamen. Many thanks for joining thank us. Thank you. Thank you. And you, ladies and gentlemen, with this we wrap up this edition of today's youth. Many thanks for watching and stay tuned for more coming up here on Nazi International. <laughs>